What's going on everybody and welcome back to our second race day vlog on this channel. Today we are at South Alabama Speedway for the Baby Rattler 125 as a part of the Rattler 50 weekend. Uh, it's been a long night for me. I left work at 10.30 and drove straight down here and it's about a five and a half hour drive. Uh, but when we got here, the track was getting ready to open so I just slept on the way down and woke up, got out of the car sign for my fit pass and here we are uh this video is going to be shorter so uh, i know that last one was pretty long i'm gonna try and abbreviate this one a little more and hopefully my gopros don't die throughout the race in this one i don't think they will uh, so it's, it's gonna be our first race on the home built race car on heartbreaker so i'm excited for it uh, if you'll stick around i think you'll be excited for it and hopefully by the end of this thing we're taking our picture with a snake for today uh, I think we ended up sixth and we're about we're I think we're a tenth or two off the fast guys I think Pollard won a, an eight or a nine um, Tullus won a nine I think we went an 07 so we're close uh, we tried something in that first practice and it was good I just couldn't get the feel of it like I knew it it felt good I just couldn't drive it like I needed to so we went back to what we knew and uh, tuned on it a little bit. And I think we're pretty good. We're struggling for a little bit of drive. We're on a new tire. Uh, it's our, not our first time on this tire. We tested on it when we tested this car the first time, but still, we don't have a lot of data on the tire. So we're trying to figure out how to get a little more drive, a little more grip out of the tires themselves. But other than that, I think it went pretty good. Also, shout out uh, Haas TK. I got some stickers from the technical school I go to. I go to trade school to be a machinist at uh, TCAT Smyrna. They gave me some stickers to put on the car and I forgot them at the house. So wearing my shirt today. All right, y'all, it's race day. And it is freezing cold. It's like 40 something degrees and it rained yesterday, so it's wet. Got the car unloaded. Uh, spent probably three or four hours working on it last night trying to get a few things right on it right, so we finished sixth yesterday on the speed chart but we still wanted to work on a few things and uh, get a few things how we wanted both setup wise and like comfort wise for me because that's the second time I've ever sat in that car so getting all that figured out it took about three or four hours yesterday after everyone else had left but I think we got it how we want it now we'll get one or two practices today shake it down again and see if our changes worked and if we like them and see if we can find a little more speed in it hopefully we can pick up about a tenth it would be great uh i think the track's gonna be a little faster today so if we can pick up a tenth over what we were yesterday that'd be good and see what we got for qualifying all right we just got back from the driver's meeting and something neat about this is this is an srl race this is not like uh pensacola and montgomery and Nashville where they all run under the same race director and whatnot. This is a different guy. Um, they come from out west. SRL is an out west thing. But this race doesn't have the choose cone, except for the leader. We're not doing any competition cautions. This is a comp caution, this is not, whatever. We're gonna run 125 green flag laps and the leader is gonna choose lanes after the initial start. Everything after that after the initial start, the leader gets to choose inside or out. The rest of the field stacks up like we're supposed to. Lap cars to the back. So, hopefully we won't have any issues like that this weekend uh, with the, the team that's doing this deal. Hopefully we won't have lineup issues. So, that's good. We get two laps 
two dead laps in qualifying instead of one because uh, of how cold it is and because we're on a pretty hard tire compound so and also Tom Ajeski uh, drives full-time in the NASCAR truck series and is racing at Atlanta today so they flip-flopped our qualifying order pro late models are gonna go first to qualify that way it gives Ty, Ty time to fly in from Atlanta to come qualify his super so we're gonna get a cold racetrack two laps to warm it up but luckily we're going out like third from last to qualify so hopefully there'll be a little heat in it so we'll just have to play it by ear and see how it goes
unusual. Qualified like junk. We're gonna start 14. I think we've got a good race car. We're just gonna have to kind of get through the field and avoid the wrecks without going a lap down or getting ourselves hung up in something because we're trying to go too fast. So we've got 125 laps to figure it out. Just got to see how we do. Quick side note, this is pretty cool. Uh, this is the first like real autograph session I've done. Uh, South Alabama Speedway and SRL National came and told us in the driver's meeting that we were going to do this. So I only brought a few hero cards thinking I wouldn't get very many people. But this was like the highlight of my night, man. I ran out of hero cards. We gave away so many. Uh, and I felt bad for this little kid right here. He was like, can I have a Euro card? And I was like, man, I just ran out. And he looked around and pulled his glove off and was like, sign this. And so I signed his glove. But I had a great time hanging out with the fans, signing autographs. This was super cool, something I've never got to do uh, prior to Saturday night. So this was definitely the highlight of my night. So thank you to everyone who came down and got a picture, autograph. I had a ton of fun. In the number 84, sponsored by Napa and Dixie Diesel from Nashville, Tennessee, Stephen Chun. Broadcast partner Rodney Rodriguez bring us to the flag. Trish from Rogers Dab Chevrolet has made her way up into the birdcage. She will wave the green flag. They get set to hit the start zone. Green flag is in the air. We're underway with the 18th annual Baby Rattler 125 at South Alabama Speedway. Into corner number one they go. It's Michael Hine down on the bottom side to the back straightaway. We go trouble on the front stretch. The 84 car, the 84 car sideways. Has on the break, able to get away was Hind, but it matters not, Ryan. We're going to have to do it all over again. There was a stack up on the inside line back about, I want to say, seventh or so where Bryson Schaffer started. And I believe it was just the old school accordion effect. Schaffer couldn't get going. The first couple of cars were able to, but whoever was starting behind Stephen Chun obviously couldn't. It may have been Jeff Dawkins. And Stephen Chun goes around before he even gets to the start finish line. We'll get everybody back in line. Should be pretty simple to do that as you had a little bit of a breakaway there up at the front of the pack. But as Ryan mentioned, that was that accordion effect in the middle of the pack, and it just takes one. You get a miss shift, you spin a tire, something like that happens, and it's Katie bar the door. Taking a look at the replay as they came down to the stripe. There they are on the gas. There you see it right there. The contact at the backside, the 12 car involved, you called it. Exactly perfect right there, Ryan, the 12 car. And the 84 ends up pointed in the wrong direction. Well, actually, Bryson Schaffer went spinning as well. So maybe he, maybe it wasn't accordion. Maybe he just didn't get going. And that was maybe JoLynn Wilkinson starting behind him in that 11. She got going pretty well, and he didn't. And that's what happens when you're fighting over the same piece of real estate. Unfortunately for Stephen Chun, he spun as well. But fortunately for Stephen Chun, he didn't hit anything.
guys, again, uh, this one lasted all race, the one that you're watching right now. It lasted the entire race, but you really can't see anything other than me, so there's no point in just sitting here and showing you this. Uh, I mean, if y'all want that, I can, I can throw a whole race up just uh, facing me, but we're going to get that figured out. Um, they're getting hot is what it is because I got that media mod on them, and so when you take the media mod off, they'll run the whole race, but I threw a 7 in the uh, holder for the one that's facing outward, and I should have put the 9 in there, but I was worried that the 9 was going to overheat like it did last time, so either way, I'm going to get that fixed, I promise. Uh, there will be no more voicing over because we will get to see the entire race eventually. I will get it fixed. Also, I just wanted to throw this bit in here because I thought it was funny. In that Rogers Dabs Chevrolet Pro Late model, into the top 10 as we work. Lacks beginning to click away next time by. It's 20 laps to go at the start finish line. Christopher Tallis continues to run in the third spot. He's about two seconds off the race lead of Bubba Pollard. His Pollard is having all sorts of trouble in turn number three and four with Stephen Chun. Chun across the nose of Bubba Pollard. I saw it open back in three and four as Chun was right in the racing line. Pollard very, I would say, gingerly moved Stephen Chun out of the way. It could have been a hard end to the night for Chun in the inside wall if Pollard wouldn't have done it so delicately. Obviously... No love for me from this announcer. Uh, I don't know who he is, but, yeah, he – I just thought it was funny how he, like, freaked out. You know, I was just trying to stay on the bottom. Bubba was arcing his exit. We kind of met, and he slid across my bumper. It is what it is. But I just – it was funny to me how he freaked out, how I was, like – acted like I was holding up Bubba and that if Bubba hadn't just gracefully got me out of the way, I would have destroyed my race car. So I thought that was funny. I'm pretty sure we all would have still lived regardless of whether, you know, Bubba moved me or not. But, hey, I don't know. Maybe I would have rigged my race car. Well, we ran like ass. Finished somewhere in the back. Uh, finished where we started, 14th. So, like three or four cars from dead last. Uh, we had a really good car. And I know everyone who finishes dead last says, oh, we had a good car, this or that, this or that. I fell out of the seat. Um, that is the most uncomfortable I've ever been in a race car. Everything was cramping, everything was hurting. The car's just not, we didn't build it for a tall person. And we should have, and we tried, but we failed. Uh, so, take it home, cut it up, try again. But, uh, you know, I feel bad. I know we, we did have a good car, because in practice where I didn't get uncomfortable, we were fast, but trying to run a whole race, I just, I was trying so hard to keep my legs scrunched up and everything scrunched up to stay off the pedals and whatnot. I just just got wore out. You get wore out when you're straining all the muscles in your body. Every single lap, you can't relax and drive. So we ran like shit and it's my fault and I understand that, but like I said, we're just gonna have to try and work on it and get better. So it is what it is. With that being said, I'm gonna end this weekend right here. Thank you for watching. Um, we had a driver autograph session, signed a ton of hero cards, took a bunch of pictures. It was super cool to see everybody. I'm sorry we didn't run any better than we did for y'all, but we'll work on it and get better. So if you hadn't already, subscribe for the next shit show of a race we try to run. Maybe we'll do a little better. Thanks for watching.